What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I've got some football focus. As promised, I am back with my second video of the day. I'm covering all things Steelers draft a little bit late. Uh, I covered the Thursday round one draft pick uh, on Friday, so go back and check out my thoughts on the round one draft pick and uh, pluses and minuses and where he fits. Uh, and then just uh, about two hours ago, I covered the uh, day two picks from rounds two and three, the three guys we drafted on Friday. And so that is uh, up on the channel right now. Go check that out. And here I am coming back to you guys now with the day four picks, the Steelers picks from round four, five, six, and seven, as well as our, I think we have six undrafted free agents. So I'm just going to give you guys some really quick thoughts on, you know, value, positional depth, where these guys fit, pluses and minuses, just real quick. Um, these are later round guys, so I know a little bit less about these guys than I do the earlier guys, but I did do some homework. I checked out some video, uh, just a l little bit of tape here and there. Um, in round four, Pittsburgh picked at 119, and they took guard Mason McCormick out of South Dakota State, uh, like, like an FCS guy. Um, really kind of beloved guy here. Mason McCormick what was kind of uh, an early favorite uh, rising up the draft boards a little bit. This is pretty good value for him. I saw him going between round three and four, so this is pretty good value here. It's a little bit of a head-scratcher, though, because I loved our first four picks. We really went heavy on filling our biggest needs with guys that were falling to us in the first four rounds. We went O-tackle, and then center, and then wide receiver, and then inside linebacker. We covered some really good pieces uh, that gave us really good value. This pick here is, you know, a good value piece. This is a really good guard. He was the fifth best player on the board available overall when we selected him. He fell uh, slightly lower than expected to fall, so it was a good value pick, and I do like what I've seen from Mason so far briefly. The problem for me with this pick was cornerback was the one remaining big need, right? We had four needs coming into this draft, in the fourth round here, we got three of those four needs, plus an inside linebacker. Picking a corner here would have been great. Um, and there were two, in particular, corners that were still on the board, one of tremendous value. Chris Abrams' drain was still on the board, which I don't know too, too well. But TJ Tampa was still on the board. We could have gotten a potential second-round corner here in the fourth round and covered a really big need to get TJ Tampa. We passed up on that, surprisingly. I don't know if there's an injury history or something I don't know about, but I, I saw Tampa mock to us a lot between the second and third rounds. So to get him in the fourth and cover our last big need with another really good falling player would have been the perfect draft. I would have given that an A. Uh, instead, we get a guard, and obviously he's not going to come in and start right away. We have James Daniels and Isaac Sayamalu, um, but he's going to be right in there uh, as a nice depth piece with uh, Nate Herbig. So he's going to kind of be the other guard along with Herbig and potentially Spencer Anderson, depending on where he falls. But it feels like Mason has some, some versatility, positional flexibility, which the team likes. He can move around a little bit, but he's primarily a guard, uh, primarily an interior guy. He seems like a really good pulling guard. Um, he's another guy that feels good in space to me. He's not incredibly strong, um, he's a big, compact guy, you know, pretty big overall, but does seem like somebody who's good in space. When he gets a head start, he can run straight through you. I don't feel like his technique or his overall play strength holds up all that well. He does get beat in technique, and the longer the play goes and the more traditional blocking he has to do, I don't think it's great, but I do think that he's a super athletic guy. His testing was really good. He's one of the most athletic guards in this draft, and like I said, there is good value here. I think that he's a good puller, which Pittsburgh likes to do. He's going to be really good for those like counter and draw plays and then shotgun handoff type plays. I think he's going to shine in that. So this is a guy who is a good depth piece right now. He's a good three slash four guard who has a lot of potential, uh, who has some pretty good physical tools and could be a guard for the future to fill in if Daniels or Sayamalu does not come back in future seasons. So uh, not a bad position to draft for. Definitely not a bad value pick, but I just question it because corner was a much, much bigger need for us uh, where our guards are already set and uh, someone as good as TJ Tampa still being there at this level. I'm surprised we passed on that. So because of passing on a bigger need and, and, a, and a better overall ADP player, I'm going to give this pick a B. B or B minus, somewhere in there. Definitely better than average, but not nearly as good as the first four A's that I gave the Steelers. So B or B minus here, but still not bad. Uh, then round number six, we picked at number 178, 
We took the defensive tackle out of Iowa, Logan Lee. Uh, I really enjoyed Logan Lee's tape, the brief bit that I saw. Logan Lee kind of, kind of reminds me of like a like Sean Smith or someone like that um, from a few years ago. He's he's got a he's a pretty like you know, undersized guy, but he is a really athletic guy. He's he's smaller, but he gets around the edge very fast. I don't think he's going to be big enough or strong enough to um, pull off D tackle in the NFL. I would leave those to the Keanu Bettons of the world and, you know, guys like that. Guys like Montrevis Adams. Logan Lee, to me, plays like a um, a defensive end. He's going to be in Ogan Joby or Cam Spot if there's an injury or something like that. Um, that's going to help us kind of push Loudermilk and Layal again. We're putting more depth on the team. We just signed veterans uh, starter Dean Lowry, and now we just brought in Logan Lee, who I think is an underrated signing. I, I like his value here. Um, he's going to be a really athletic outside guy. He's a decent run stuffer. He's uh, he's consistent in staying with the play, and he's pretty good at getting to the outside. So while the guy's not consistently fast and he's not consistently strong, he's got a lot of potential and a lot of tools. And having someone, another young guy that is pretty athletic for that size to push guys like Leal and Loudermilk along with Lowry to kind of see what the future is after Cam and Ogan Joby are gone is a good depth piece here. So I like this pick a lot. I'm going to give this one a B. And then we have our final sixth round pick. Uh, round six, number 195, we took Ryan Watts, the cornerback out of Texas. Uh, I don't think he's going to project as a corner in the NFL. Dude's got a lot of size. He's like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, dude is tall, dude is long, and dude's got some mass on him. Um Again, played, I think, at Ohio State first, then transferred to Texas. So big school guy, high pedigree, highly sought after, good competition in college. Uh, really good hitter. He's going to play to me more like a box safety. He's kind of like a Terrell Edmonds. He can bat the ball in the air and he can track a little bit, but he's not super fast. He doesn't always get his head around super quick. He's not really much of a cover guy in terms of a uh, stick with him, right? His speed is not great. He's not a speed guy. He's a short-term guy that can run down the play. He's a downhill thumper. He can hit you. He can play a little bit. He plays much more like a safety than a corner. I don't know that he's going to find a place at safety on this team since we already have four, but there's definitely a potential for kind of a safety inside linebacker slot corner, kind of a hybrid guy. If he can play special teams and hit, he can be an extra guy in the box who could be fun to watch in preseason as he tries to get a special team spot. So um, I'm not gigantic on this pick because we didn't get our, you know, cover corner, our outside guy in this draft. Uh, but he does, again, have a high pedigree and a lot of physical and tang uh, tangibles. So I'm going to say Ryan Watts for me is a C. So not as big on day three as I was on days one and two. I our first four picks couldn't have been more perfect. Uh, pick number five in round four, McCormick, I, I like for sure, just not as much as a potential corner there. And then I think Logan Lee is an underrated steal. And uh, Ryan Watts has a lot of potential, but is also very developmental and very raw for me. So those are my thoughts uh, on day three. As far as who has the best shot to make the team, uh, the defensive line is getting kind of crowded. So I, don't, I like Logan Lee, but I don't know if he'll make it. Uh, Mason McCormick, I think, will make it. I think he's going to make the team. Ryan Watts, I, I don't know, depending on where he plays at. So I'm going to say Mason McCormick is the biggest upside here on day three. Now let's get to the... Uh, the, the undrafted free agents so far. Pittsburgh, I believe, at this point, has signed six of them. So as of this recording, I'm going to quickly just run down the six. And I don't know that any of these six guys have a shot of making the team either, but there are a couple that kind of excite me. Uh, Dijon Edwards, the running back from Georgia, is the one that I know the most. I've, I've watched the most, and I like this guy. Um, he, is, he is really um, – he's a good pass-catching back. I like him a lot. He's a compact guy. He has a combination of uh, speed and power, mostly a power back who's not afraid to lower his shoulder, get contact, and run some guys over. Really good at lowering that shoulder, good at finishing runs. He is a, he's a good, like, you know, third down and short or goal line converter. Scored a lot of touchdowns. I think he had, like, 12 last year for Georgia. Um, and, again, underrated speed for a guy that size. Not super fast, but quick enough. Um, and also pretty good cuts. He's a good cutter. Um, 
he finds his way to make himself small in holes, right? He gets himself skinny in the hole and finds um, something out of nothing. He turns like uh, runs that have potential to go nowhere into some pretty good runs. Uh, good cutter, good in the hole, good pass catching back, and a solid runner. I like this guy. I just don't know where he's going to fit. Pittsburgh doesn't usually keep four running backs, and they already have uh, Jalen Najee and Cordero Patterson, and who's probably going to be playing special team returning also. So I don't think there's a spot for him on this roster. But he's one to root for. I like this kid a lot, and I think he has potential in the NFL, honestly. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Beanie Bishop, the cornerback out of West Virginia. Um, he's small to me. He definitely reads very small on tape. I don't know exactly how big he is, but he reads kind of small. And I don't think his technique is all of all that great. Uh, but I do have physical here, and he definitely is... Um, he, he's big on, on, you know, just being up in a guy's face. He likes being glued to guys. So his technique to me didn't seem all that great with, with his hands or his body placement. Didn't seem to always get his head around. Kind of, kind of like Watts, but Watts is just much more physically impressive. Uh, but Bishop did find the ball quite a bit. He was, he was around the ball for turnovers, got a few picks, had a couple of nice catches along the sidelines for interceptions. So, um, I don't know that he'll make the roster, but the corner spot is open. I mean, for him and for Watts, I think Watts, Watts is going to convert. But I think Bishop's got a chance. We only really have, you know, four starting corners on the roster, four corners on the roster right now. So he's got a chance to make it. Uh, he looks a little raw to me, but definitely has potential. Then we have Jacoby Winman, the outside linebacker from Michigan State. Um, I like him because he's got a variety of outside moves, right? He's he's one of those guys, I saw him slip under a couple times. He's got a nice spin move. He's got to like fake outside and cut back inside. He can outspeed rush you to the edge. I saw him hitting guys with a lot of different moves. Um, he had some really good games against some, some uh, inferior teams, but did seem to get around a lot of guys for tackles for losses and sacks. So he's got potential, especially considering Pittsburgh is looking for a fourth outside linebacker behind the three guys that we have her big Watt and Highsmith. Uh, we don't have a fourth guy right now, so he's got potential to make the roster. We'll see if he can uh, use that speed and if he has enough size and quickness to consistently get to the quarterback in preseason. And then we have uh, Trey Brown, the center out of Jacksonville State, another offensive lineman. Uh, we're just This is the fourth guy we've added already, um, so not a big surprise there, but I couldn't find much on him. Uh, Julius Weisoff, for, uh, the an outside linebacker from Charlotte, who I couldn't find much on, so I don't know much about those two guys. And finally, our fourth quarterback. We're bringing four quarterbacks to camp as per usual. This is uh, John Reese Plumley, the quarterback out of Central Florida. Uh, he's really fast. Dude, dude is an athlete, man. He was one of the fastest quarterbacks and highly, most high, highly recruited quarterbacks, excuse me, uh, when he first came out four years ago. Uh, incredibly fast, really good on his feet, can get to the outside and avoid sacks, can throw on the run, and when he looks to run, he's got really good speed and good cuts with his feet. Um, really strong arm as well. I don't know about his decision making. He was under throwing some balls at times, and he was also kind of just throwing things up down the sidelines at times, so I don't know about like throwing consistent routes, but he's got what looks to be a pretty good deep ball on top of his uh, athleticism and also a pretty good slant, a pretty pretty good strong slant over the middle. So potential there. I don't think he's going to make the roster necessarily unless he can beat out the veteran uh, third quarterback, Kyle Allen, on this roster. He's not beating out Fields or Russell, so he's going to be fighting with Kyle Allen for that third spot. Um, if anyone's got a shot to make this roster, I really like Dejon Edwards. I don't think he has a chance, but I like him a lot. I want to see him do well. I would say maybe either Beanie Bishop or Jacoby uh, Winman because of the placement of the roster right now and their potential. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think of our rounds four through seven, our round four and our two six round picks, as well as these six undrafted free agents? Uh, what did you think of the picks? Who do you think we should have picked instead? Are you a fan of these? Grade them for me and give me some other undrafted free agents Pittsburgh should be looking at right now to try and complete their roster. We still have some holes at corner and things like that. So tell me what you think overall of all the entire draft and all my, my videos. Go back and check out uh, day one and day two and check this one out on day three. And tell me what you think of Pittsburgh's roster as of right now and who's got a chance on this list to make that roster. And I will see you guys soon. And now I get to go rest my voice finally because it's been a long day. Take care.